Greetings, dear diary. Today, my thoughts about monogamy. And the full title of the talk is Heterosexual Monogamy A Sin Against Nature. Heterosexual Monogamy A Sin Against Nature. Survivors survive, reproduce, and thus propagate any heritable traits that have improved in the given circumstances their survival and reproductive success. However, circumstances change, hence, different traits are fitter for different circumstances. So which species, societies, individuals or genes have better chances of beating extinction? Ones that continue to be better adapted for immediate local environment. Now, traits are passed through genes. Further, most fertile females, if fit enough, get opportunities to reproduce and do so. Thus, the genes that the fit enough fertile females carry, unless circumstances change drastically, are essentially immortal over the span of several generations. In other words, there is little opportunity for the species to improve its fitness through the females. In addition to the highly adapted females, most, not all, most mediocre ones reproduce too. The gene pool for the next generation as contributed to by the female phenotype alone therefore remains largely, largely mediocre. Now here we presume that the primary struggle to survive is between the genes and or the species, not between the individuals and societies. This would mean that the only function of individuals and societies is to reproduce or help related individuals reproduce and ensure the survival of their offspring to the reproductive age. So, is there any possibility for a species to improve itself, that is, its gene pool, while there has been no drastic change in the circumstances? Yes, there is. The mechanism is through that largely useless phenotype, the male. Many would consider my calling the male phenotype useless, almost a blasphemy. After all, no major religion has a female at the peak of its phalanx of gods. That actually is enough of a proof that it is the men that make the gods and not the other way around. But that is a different discussion. Back to the uselessness of men. Remember, we have started with the presumption that the primary goal of any genes or species is fighting their extinction, which, by the way, is also the primary goal of the two intermediate stops, that is, the individuals and societies that lie between the two biological extremes. 
But there is no reason to suspect that the primary game of life is played out at the way stations. It is always the termini that are the most relevant. Check out your local railway or airlines timetable. It is very humbling, but is most likely the truth that it is not the genes or the species that are the enablers for the vicarious immortality of the individual, but rather that the individual is and the societies are the vehicles of the actual near immortality of the genes or just possibly of the ever adapting and thus ever changing species in other words of life itself. Therefore, there is no reason to attach any importance to that virtual overhead called the male. You can see that reality being played out on any colony of any social insect. Males have only one function to improve the gene pool for the next generation. The females can do everything that a male can do and might I add generally better. The male cannot do the most basic thing, give birth. The primary vehicle of gene or life, immortality. Excuse me. And if any doubt remains, we just need to look at the conception of a male. It starts out as a female. It starts out as a female, which can perhaps be called the basic phenotype. Basic phenotype. Somewhere along the line, a little bit of stitching is done and the fetus is given the job of improving the gene quality of the next generation. That is all that it needs to do. The rest of its life is irrelevant. Perhaps it is this very realization that made the males of the human species band together and grab the power from the female of the species through myriads of institutions pressed into service of the man at the cost of the woman. Patriarchy, which often goes along with patrilineality, is one such, perhaps, along with religion and tribalism or nationalism, it is the primary weapon in the hands of the men of this world. Of course, the blame of this too can well be laid at the doors of the female of the species. They should have chosen to be the brains, as in the bonobo society, or the brawn, as in the hyena society. They, instead, decided to look for those qualities in their mates, dumb broads, excuse me, while you get angry at me. Men chose to use this stupid behavior of human females to their great advantage and turned the females into the real weaker and the real stupider sex. Men continued to lift more weight, run faster, fight more wars, write more poetry, discover more stars, invent more gadgets, hypothesize more theories, and win more Nobel Prizes than their female peers. Over time, 
men beat women rather comprehensively. A typical man, however, had to contend with an enemy much stronger than a typical woman. Other men. Other men, each vastly inferior to a very strong and intelligent man, could band together and beat him. So how does this strong man counter the strength of a mob of men? By the classic strategy of sharing the spoils of the war in just sufficient a measure that keeps the hordes at bay. Thus, a powerful man often ensures that the poor get their bread and circuses and also have enough of a pool of women to have a practical chance of reproducing, at least in principle. Very few powerful men have broken that compact. And when they have, the results have been spectacular. Eight centuries back, a man named Temujin ensured that his genes to this day constitute the Y chromosome of as many as a twelfth of all men from his erstwhile dominions. And just give me a sec. Ah, thank you. However, for most part in the civilized world, civilized world, men theoretically are content with one woman. Ha! <laughs> what a joke. The male phenotype cannot be content with only one lover. His investment in an offspring is too little. Just a little bit of spray paint. Why wouldn't he want to paint more considering that he has a couple of factories working day and night inside him? Pair bonding does not get him a twelfth of all men for science, even if it gets him a little bit of doubtful security. Uh, woman's investment, au contraire, is comparatively infinitely higher. So even if she wants the most successful genes for the few children that she can practically have, owing to her high investment in each, she often prefers to pair bond with a man that will likely care for her and her offspring vastly increasing her chances of long-term reproductive success even if the genes are not top-notch. Perhaps women are indeed the more intelligent of the phenotypes. They each manage a dumb <laughs> private protector of their own even if he is not the most powerful or the smartest of the lot, despite his not being inclined to muzzle his shotgun. Excuse me. However, to whatever extent monogamy does or does not help the males or the females in the goals that they are willy-nilly pulled towards, Neither the species nor the genes seem to be well served by the ideal of monogamy. The only possibility of improving the gene pool is lost. Monogamy thus clearly is unnatural. Would it not be better to have the females run the show? Males can be what they really are, the fertilizers. Superior males can thus father a better brood, 
improving the chances of delaying the inevitable extinction of the human species. Most would worry about the hordes of men that would have no women to copulate with. Well, that is not the business of the genes. It is that of the memes. All we need to do is do what bonobos and giraffes and countless number of other species do. Encourage the subprime males to copulate with other subprime males. Sounds crazy? Well, whatever the current pretensions, I am pretty sure that many of us subprime males will basically be happy coupling with other males so long as that helps us live longer and happier lives not having to fight others to death over females all the time or spend countless hours slogging at meaningless jobs all for the ridiculous mirage of what surviving through our genes bye bye dear diary